the representations of those embeddings because we wanted to see if computer-assisted sense delineation uh, was feasible using these word representations and we also wanted to better understand the distributional features, the distribution information stored in these contextualized word representations. So we want to exploit the power of distributional semantics. Um, Harris famously said that the words that co-occurred with the same words had similar meanings. You don't need uh, deep learning to harness this distributional semantics, but artificial neural networks based systems uh, which are indicated as uh, phases uh, two and three here in the slides turn out to be better in uh, a variety of tasks. These networks have become large with billions of trainable parameters we have seen what uh, they can do in generative tasks, uh, consider GPT's capabilities. Here we do not have a generative task at hand, but importantly, contextualized embeddings characterize individual uses of words rather than all uses at the same time. This is mission critical for us uh, in this case, as we are after various polysemous homonymous uses of words, we've selected BERT uh, for our analysis. Let me introduce our methods of analysis. We process occurrences of four lemmas. So this is a case study. Full mouth, risk, and sound. In sentences that we get from two sources, um, the online Oxford Learners Dictionary, we've used all examples that are sentences, including extra examples that had the exact lemma. Uh, and we also extracted 1,000 randomly selected corpus sentences for each word from the British National Corpus. We produced bird embeddings for the head words in each example sentence by running the neural network uh, the neural activations for the target words were extracted and saved for visualization. The language model that we used uh, is the largest pre-trained BERT model uh, from Hogging Face. Uh, you, can you can see the size of the model on the slide. And the size of the word embeddings that we get is uh, 124 uh, vector elements or floating point numbers per embedding. Right, so this is part of a data file from our workflow after training, uh, so we're not training, but after running the network. Right, so in the rows you have the sentences and in the columns you have the uh, activation values for individual neurons, the first 20 or so, and if you scroll right, you get the remaining 1,000, right? And we have more than 1,000 example sentences for each word. These are the dimension reduction methods we used. Initially, we were only sure about the inclusion of Disney, which is uh, well known in, the, in natural language processing, but we were also uh, interested in other options that we had access to. Finally, we were able to include MDS, ISOMAP, Spectral, and Disney. Right, so please take a look at these brief descriptions before we go on. Right, so these are manifold learning algorithms. The first three are non-linear methods. MDS is linear, so that's uh, an important uh, difference between them. Um, having produced the original high-dimensional feature vectors and mapped them into uh, two dimensions in four different ways, 
we can look for sentences that cluster with regard to the representation of the target word in them. We use the visual observation and we also tried k-means clustering with silhouette scoring to find the optional, or sorry, the optimal value for k, that is uh, the number of clusters we would like to see. And silhouette is a measure of how well data points fit in their clusters. In our work, we used uh, the Orange Data Mining Toolkit, which supports dimension reduction methods and it can also um, produce nice interactive visualizations. And this screenshot here depicts uh, our workflow in this toolkit. So this is after running the neural network and extracting the word representations. Okay, and the results. Uh, so these are the silhouette scores for different numbers of clusters listed here from C2 to 15 clusters for the four different dimension reduction methods. Right, so these are the 2D representations or clusterings for the 2D representations. And these are the clusters for the original BERT vector space. So you can actually see the increase. Uh, the best silhouette score in this case for the word uh, risk is associated with four clusters using the isomap methods. As far as the original BERT representations, or the BERT vector space is concerned, uh, C5, that is five clusters, uh, produce the best silhouette score. So this is where we are going to continue. So let's see what we get when clustering the original 1024 dimension feature vectors with five clusters. Okay, so here colors indicate clusters while B and C, uh, OD1, OD2, OD3 uh, stand for the first sense of the Oxford Dictionary, the second sense, third sense, and so on. And BNC obviously stands for um, corpus sentences taken from the BNC corpus. Um, okay, so let's take a look. So the BNC sentences uh, were distributed across the five clusters, which is normal. Uh, C1, cluster 5, included the verbal senses of risk as recorded in the Oxford Dictionary sentences and uh, uh, had some of the nominal senses, so it was not homogeneous. The first cluster included the nominal uses only. So medical risk was dominant in this cluster, but instances of risk in statistical and economic contexts also appeared. Cluster 2 was mostly associated with financial risks, but also included several health-related risks. Sentences in Cluster 3 referred to social, environmental, economic and medical risks. Sentences in the fourth cluster generally referred to risky situations without specification and also associated risk with business loss and body injuries. Okay, so there are two major problems with uh, uh, this clustering. First, as shown on the previous slide, it has a low silhouette score. It is of a low quality. Secondly, while you can produce sentence listings like these, you cannot visualize the similarity between the sentences as we are still in the original high dimensional space. This is after Disney dimension reduction, so we are two, di two dimensions uh, now. And K means clustering into 10 categories as suggested by the silhouette scores. The verbal senses of risk clustered in cluster three without nominal senses from Oxford, from the Oxford Dictionary in the cluster, but with some nominal clusters from B and C. Typical patterns did appear in the sentence listings. Here are some. So in cluster one, okay. so in cluster one, it was 
B risk to NP, which was a common pattern. In cluster two, it was increased, reduced, high, low risk of nanophrase. In cluster four, we found risk of ING form and risk plus that clause. We also found that adjective risk and sequences were most frequent in cluster six rather than in other clusters. Whereas collocations such as at risk uh, distinguished the sentences in cluster seven. Sentences referring to health related risks were primarily placed in cluster two, whereas business and financial risks dominated cluster five. Sorry for flicking the slides. Okay, so this slide here shows the silhouette scores for math before and after dimension reduction. Right, so this is the original BERT vector space, and these are the two dimensional vector spaces. And this is the legend here. Okay, and this is for the word math, which has many polysemous senses in the dictionary. Um, you may wonder what happens when we give up on silhouette scoring and select K so that it corresponds to the number of dictionary senses. So we just want to see as many clusters as dictionary senses. So this is exactly what we did here. We started with a spectral map and asked for five clusters. And we got useful usage categories, albeit not exactly those selected by lexicographers. Among them, we saw a usage pattern of mouth in romantic contexts, mouth related to speaking and mouth related to making facial expressions. The literal use of mouth to speak and the metonymic use as a way of speaking overlapped in clusters one and five. Here. Um, these are the, the blue and the yellow areas, right? It was interesting to see that uh, all the sentences in category three, the green group over here, right? Um, were taken from the corpus only, the BNC corpus, and dictionary examples did not appear in this distributional group. Right, so these are the corpus examples from romantic literature. This slide summarizes the silhouette scores of the k-means clusterings before and after using different 2D visualization methods for the four words. It's evident that the cohesion of clusters considerably increased after dimension reduction in each case. The suggested best number of clusters uh, differed in some cases across words and visual visualization methods, although the words mouth and sound generated the same number of senses after dimension reduction using any method. Right, so this is uh, for mouth here. We have five dictionary senses that we could include in the research. Uh, so that's the uh, uh, recommended number of clusters for the original BERT vector space. And as far as the second, or with regard to the uh, two-dimensional representations, we get three recommended clusters using any of these uh, algorithms. And we have a similar situation for sounds. So the recommended number of clusters is four, even in the original BERT uh, vector space. Also note that we have nine dictionary senses here. Imposing k-means clustering on 2D visualizations can and should be treated as an optional step in our opinion. First of all, they may be misleading and the user may ignore sub-clusters because they may want to rely on them too much. Moreover, in, the, in some cases, they are just not relevant, right? So the user may only want to get corpus data close to a specific dictionary example sentence. 
Right, so in the remaining visualizations, we will not use k-means clusters. Okay, so here dots stands or continues to stand for a use of the target word. In this example, sound. Uh, BNC sentences will be gray. Dictionary examples are colored. Uh, and colors represent senses. So this is just an overview. We are going to take a closer look, except for this chart, the MDS chart. Uh, we just don't get visual clusters that we can use here. We do tend to get better silhouette scores for MDS than what we get for the original bird vector space. Um, so technically, we get better clusters, but the visual representation is less than optimal anyway. So uh, let's zoom in on isomap. When we use isomap on bird data for this word, sound, we see that the nominal, verbal, and adjectival examples separate nicely, as expected. With regard to the dictionary senses, see the legend in the corner, then try to find the dots with the same color, close to one another and also apart. So as you see, in many cases, example sentences for the same sense remain close to each other in the resulting diagram, which is great. Uh, senses three and four are very close, but they do not mix. Some examples are further apart, see the darker blue dots, and we do not get corpus data in their vicinity. In these cases, we wonder if the example sentences from the dictionary really illustrate a common distributional pattern. We are switching to spectral representation. Here, senses three and four mix. These are the yellow and the orange dots. And we also get a set of sentences with sound belonging to different dictionary senses near the middle of the map. So spectral was inferior to isomap for this word. The last visualization, uh, or sound uses the well-known Tisney method. For this word, Tisney is our favorite as well, as it gives us visually distinct clusters, and it is not just the part of speech that seems to appear nicely, but also some semantic phenomena. It also successful, it also successfully clusters the Oxford Dictionary example sentences into more or less visually distinct categories. Okay, so this slide reveals the parameter choices for the different dimension reduction methods. In some cases, other settings were also tested. You get results for them in the paper. We do not argue that a single parameter set will cover all usage scenarios, all words of interest, and all corpus, corpus sizes. Instead, we recommend that the user should be given choices and the opportunity to find the most use, useful methods and settings. Okay. So in our experiments, on provide separation between the metaphoric, metonymic, and literal senses of words such as mouth and sound, based on the distributional features of the word uses, is reasonably good. So that was good news. The uses of words with relevance to specific semantic fields, for example, risk in financial domains, mouth to make facial expressions, full with relevance to emotions, stood out in the automatically generated clusters. And in almost all cases, silhouette scoring for 2D representations recommended fewer categories than the number of Oxford Dictionary Science categories. Some dictionary distinctions were preserved within the subclusters, but others were lost, including the four verbal senses of risk. So that was not, uh, so that was bad news, of course. Okay, uh, the bird-based distributionally motivated clusters did not correspond to the number of dictionary senses, but they did show birds' sensitivity to semantic and uh, syntactic similarities between the word uses. Before, before dimension reduction, silhouette scores of the k-means clusters were low, and so was the qualitative cohesion between the sentences in the clusters. So it makes sense to perform these dimension reduction steps uh, for generating better clusters and also for visualizing the sentences, which we have to carry out anyway. And final slide, uh, MDS was inferior to the three remaining manifold learning algorithms. 
at least in our case study. These visualizations can be helpful in enriching dictionary sen senses with additional corpus-based examples, in our opinion. And the closest BNC sentences to the dictionary examples mostly reflected very similar semantic and syntactic patterns. And in our charts, we also saw thematically motivated clusters of BNC sentences that were ignored during exemplification in the dictionary. Let me just refer you to this, you know, remember green group with uh, instances of sentences from romantic literature for males. Right, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, could you f uh, show again this uh, on the first slide with, with many many colors? Um, I may, maybe I, I I missed a bit. Yeah, this one here. Uh, yeah, this one. Can you can you explain difference between this and other other uh, the spectrum what what you what you use? I mean the. Uh, dimension reduction method yeah, yeah. spectral because it's kind of something different yeah. I also have this slide about uh, the methods that we use right so that's just a different uh, procedure for us so you know uh, we are working I mean I yeah. and my colleagues are working in the field of humanities, so we appreciate the choices that we get from these systems. Y you and, shown, and this is what we need you've to shown different to slides for TSNA, for isomer, for spectral, but this uh, colorful one, what is it? Exactly? I mean, uh, the colors here are from the k-means uh, clustering procedure. So uh, we create this map. In this case, the spectral method, but it could have been TSNI or a different method. Uh, and then uh, we get all these, you know, all these dots representing the sentences, and we just run this k-means clustering algorithm to help us find the clusters. We have to tell it the number of clusters that we need, and and we have this Sulet scoring method to find the optimum number of clusters or the optimal number of clusters we can work with. Right, so in this case, we asked for five clusters and this k-means algorithm came up with um, you know, this grouping of dots. So these clusters and we then observed the sentences. So in this uh, uh, data mining toolkit, you can simply put the mouse pointer over one of these dots, you get the sentence and you can carry out the qualitative analysis so you can check the sentence that the dot represents, and this is how we got it, right? So we had this automatic clustering. So this is not from the spectral uh, dimension reduction method. Uh, these, these colors, these clusters come from uh, the, uh, this you know, clustering procedure that we can run on TSNI and other algorithms too. And then we compared these automatic created clusters with what we see in the data. Right, yeah. so that, that, that was Thank you very much, term. because yeah. uh, all, all your speech, it was a really good uh, uh, food for thought, how we can visualize uh, different mm -hmm. meanings, and mm -hmm. this is uh, great, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello. Uh, can you tell us more about calculation resources and uh, if the source codes are publicly available and uh, about fine tuning, it's just more technical details, please. Okay, so we use the sentences from the Oxford Dictionary, so all the example sentences that are, that are there uh, on their website. We needed sentences, so we could only work with, you know, full sentences here and where phrases were used as examples. 
where we had to meet them, and we also uh, retrieved 1,000 randomly selected sentences using Sketch Engine from the BNC corpus. There we did not have the sense categories, so that was on categorized raw data. In uh, the examples, we did have the sense categories, so that's all we did. Then we uh, run these sentences um, in a neural network simulator, uh, so that's a hugging face library and the language model was also retrieved from Hugging Face. That was a pre-trained model, and we didn't carry out uh, fine-tuning here because we just, you know, we were just interested in the raw uh, distributional data that we get from the language model. And then we just, you know, uh, took a closer look at the individual sentences, clustered them, and uh, this is how we get the results. So I, we, we cannot actually republish the dictionary example sentences, so that's copyright material. Yeah. Thank you again, Agustin. Thank you, everyone. Thank you again. You now have uh, some minutes if you want to change rooms.